What's up, nerds? Today we're asking the question, are shrugs worth doing? And the answer to that is... Don't know. Now, a couple things before we get started. First, I have moved apartments, and so I'm trying to figure out the whole filming situation. Um, maybe I'll put a sauna back here. I don't know. We'll see. So I'll probably do like a gradual house reveal as I find out where exactly I should film. Second of all, I'll try to get this filmed, edited, and uploaded for today, Cyber Monday. On the website, veritifit.com, everything is 50% off. There's also a big gains package for you guys. I've been asked to put all the things in a bundle, and so I bundled it all up. That is also 50% off, so head on over there if you have not yet picked up my books. There's also a one time a year 20% off coaching. This is the only time coaching will ever be discounted, and so uh, email me. It's in the description if you want to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Now, there was a recent controversy between Paul Carter and Kasim Hansen, where Paul Carter said apparently that the shrug does not work the upper traps, it only works the levator scapulae. I can't actually see Paul's original post because he has me blocked, which is not uncommon. He seems to block pretty commonly, pretty liberally, and so uh, I can't actually see his post. But in Kasim's response, he did seem to show pretty conclusively that it does indeed work the upper traps. The levator is a very small muscle group, and thus it is contributing, but it is not the prime mover of the shrugging action. So I would say shrugs do work the upper traps. However, they might not actually be worth doing. I have, you know, pretty decent upper traps, but I very, very rarely do shrugs. The upper traps are targeted by a wide range of movements, probably a lot more movements than you think. If you look at pretty much every press, and any time you go overhead, you're going to be working the upper traps, especially if you're doing behind the neck work. In fact, some old school bodybuilders, they would do behind the neck wider grip presses specifically for the upper traps. I also personally feel that Arnold presses, due to this sort of rotation component and the large range of motion, hits the traps very, very hard. I've gotten sore traps from that movement. I will feel a trap pump from that movement if I do higher reps. And so I would say overall, this is a pretty good upper trap movement. You also have to keep in mind that pretty much any deadlift variation, whether it's a sumo deadlift, whether it's a trap bar deadlift, whether it's a Romanian deadlift, Snatch grip deadlift, anytime you have the bar in your hands and you're performing any kind of deadlift, rack pull, whatever, it's going to be working the traps quite a bit. Even if there's very little range of motion at the top, just that weighted stretch, that isometric contraction is going to provide quite a bit of trap growth, especially for some people. Uh, you look at someone like Pete Rubish, massive traps, and it seems like deadlifting contributed the most to those. It seems like people who deadlift with a rounded upper back are gonna get the most trap activation and contribution to the lift, which makes sense. If you're like already like this, it's probably gonna be more posterior chain because that's doing more work. But if you're like rounded forward like this, I mean, you can see that weighted stretch. And if you're doing that with, you know, several hundred pounds, you're gonna grow. Also, a lot of rowing variations are going to target the upper traps especially if you're a little bit more upright. So if I'm doing something like a Yates row, for me, that's quite a bit of traps. I can really focus on the lats if I want to, you know, digging down and keeping everything low. But if I'm elevating like this, I would say that is just as good of an upper trap movement as a shrug. Also, most side delt movements are gonna get you quite a bit of trap as well, especially if you are going heavier and you're cheating. So I used to do lateral raises with like 20 kilos, 25 kilos, 30 kilos for high reps, very, very cheated. In hindsight, it didn't really do much for my side delts. My side delts are a lot better now that I'm doing you know stricter and controlled, focusing on that area, but oh man, Doing like 30 kilos for these hor horrible looking cheat lateral raises, it definitely contributed to trap growth. And I think due to the weighted stretch, as well as just the range of motion, it can be a pretty decent way to grow your upper traps. 
if you look at something like the upright row, this is kind of like a shrug and then you're moving your arms as well. It's hard to do upright rows without getting that kind of shrugging action. So I would say for most people, this is probably a little bit more time efficient because you're doing a shrug and then you're also working other areas as well. Face pulls, Lou lateral raises, cable lateral raises, pretty much any kind of side delt movement, it's gonna be working the upper traps. A lot of rear delt movements as well. The rear delts, it's gonna move the upper arm, the traps are gonna be working on the scapula, but they're gonna be working together in most cases. So if you're doing a reverse pec deck, you're doing dumbbell reverse rear delt raises, if you're doing skiers, pretty much any movement is going to be working the upper traps and the mid traps and a little bit of lower traps as well. Also, and some people might disagree with me on this, but I've felt it myself, squats. Squats can work the upper traps as well. If you look at like something like a high bar back squat, especially for higher reps, you are going to be working your traps at least a little bit. And I've had times where I'm on like rep 16, 17, 18 of a 20 rep squat set. I've already been standing there for three minutes. I'm sort of just shaking and wavering in the breeze and my traps are starting to, you know, cramp up and feel tired and feel fatigue. And that is because the bar is resting there and you still have to have tension from the upper traps. Also something like a zombie squat, the bar is out in front and you have to keep all this tension in this area in order to keep upright. You might say this is more lower traps, this is more rhomboids. It is, but the upper traps are still under tension. So presumably you could be working the upper traps every time you step foot in the gym already. So if you're doing a push pull leg split, the push day, any press, any overhead work is gonna be working the traps. The pull day, any row is gonna be working the upper traps to some extent. The leg day, any deadlift and some squats are gonna be working the upper traps. So for a lot of people, there's just no need for shrugs because they're already getting in a lot of volume for the upper traps already. That being said, the upper traps are extremely resilient. I think adding in shrugs is something that is fairly easy to recover from. However, I do think that especially when you're going heavy, often the lower back is actually going to be the limiting factor. You might not feel it during the movement, but all of that axial loading really does add up over time and it might take away from your other movements. So if you have to add in shrugs to get in more trap volume, but now you have to deload your squats or your deadlifts or program around your shrugs, to me that doesn't make a lot of sense. Now you might say, okay, we'll just do them very, very strict, use dumbbells, use cables. I think you get into the situation where the weight is so light that you're really only working that super contracted position. You might get a pump, but I think because you're missing out on that big weighted stretch that a trap bar power shrug or a snatch grip power shrug or you know a high pull or something or Olympic lifting gets you, I think you're just not gonna get that much out of the movement. So I rarely program shrugs for myself or for clients because you get into the situation, if someone doesn't have lagging traps, there's absolutely no reason to do shrugs. If someone does have lagging upper traps, well then just adding in more side delt work, more rear delt work, more overall volume on the other lifts is probably gonna get the upper traps to grow anyway. And if you add in shrugs, you do have this cost of moving heavy weight with that weighted stretch. And so it does seem to add up over time and not get you that much benefit. That being said, I know some people really, really like shrugs and power shrugs. Atlas Power Shrug over on Instagram, he had a recent post about them. Basement Bodybuilding also had a recent post about power shrugs. He's really been enjoying those. It's been cool following his journey. Uh, I know Alex Leonidas, Alpha Destiny has been doing them for a long time. So there is certainly potentially value here, but I would say you're probably better off focusing on other movements first, adding them in later if your upper traps are still a weak point. So overall, I would say there is some utility here and it might be worth including in your program, but it might be later in your journey, certainly not as a beginner. And I can't tell you how many times someone has said like, oh wow, you must have done a lot of shrugs. And I'm like, now. Anyway, this 50% off sale will last until, let's say until Tuesday, give you guys a chance. Uh, this will be the lowest price all year, 
probably until next year, the price of my books have been climbing as people say that it should go up. And I see other fitness products that people are charging 60, 70, 80, 100, 150, 200 dollars. So this will be the lowest price that you will ever see. Also 20% off coaching, email in the description if you are interested in working with me. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.